Hello everyone, my name is Gwenel Bécan. I'm a third year PhD student working for both the Center for Nanoscience and Nanotechnology and in the company Mystic. Today, I'm glad to share with you the results of our project with this presentation entitled Mechanical Comparison between two titanium micromembranes for in vivo pressure monitoring. But first of all, why do we need to monitor pressure within the body? Because each organ or body fluid has its own pressure signature. And so a disease can affect this signature. That's why monitoring pressure can be linked to monitoring patient's health. If we take the example of the brain, monitoring intracranial pressure can give clinicians significant information about a disease called hydrocephalus. For the eyes, monitoring intraocular pressure can help with the treatment of glaucoma. Last example, if you're suffering from heart failure, it will be easier for you to predict if a stroke is coming soon or not. And what we would like to do is to create a versatile sensor able to address all these diseases. Let's now have a look on the specification we need to reach to create such sensor. Here you have the ranges of pressures uh, for different organs of fluids. You have the normal and the abnormal ranges. As you can see, we are working at very low pressure compared to other applications such as sensors and for the aircraft industry. Though there are many different ranges in the body, the pressure within the, the eye is completely different from the one in the heart. We can go from minus 10 to 50 mm of mercury for intracranial pressure and from 50 to 190 mm of mercury for blood pressure. And so again, we want a sensor which can address all these ranges. In addition of that, we want to reach a minimal resolution of 1 mm of mercury which would be enough for every application. Finally, there is also a special need of a given sampling rate for some application. For steady measurements, 30 Hz is enough, but if you want to have a closer look on the waveform of this pressure signal, it's better to have a sampling at 200 Hz for the herd. And here are some examples of already developed pressure sensors. Here you have, for example, a capacity-based sensor for intraocular pressure monitoring. Here you have the system, which is actually the first FDA-approved pressure sensor which can work wirelessly. It's uh, called uh, the CardioMem sensor, and it is aimed for heart pressure monitoring. You see you have an inucto-based sensor for bladder pressure monitoring. And finally, in D, you have a microbubble-based intracranial or bladder pressure monitoring system. What's different in our approach is that we want to design a capacitive pressure sensor but out of bulk titanium. Why titanium material? Because compared to other materials such as silicon, which is popular in the market of microelectronics, titanium is not brittle, it's biocompatible and resistant to corrosion. I will add that titanium is a metallic material of choice if you want to design a device which is biocompatible. As an example, here you have a leadless pacemaker and uh, its housing is out of titanium. And one potential application could be to weld our sensor on such system. And this is what we want to do. We want to create a capacitive solution here, measuring a variable capacitance by getting two electrodes closed. They are getting closer thanks to a membrane which will deflect when pressure is applied. It can be either a flat membrane or a pillar, which will actually act as an electrode and will get closer to the other electrode. It means that it will change the gap and so the capacitance. By the way, the initial gap is the same for both designs. And besides this gap, you have two other relevant parameters, the pillar radius and the membrane radius. As different designs are under investigation, uh, so the typical dimensions are given here. So the sensor we propose is composed of two wafers bonded together. So the image depicted here is actually the one uh, for uh, flat membranes. So the first one is used for the membrane. So 
to the first wafer, and the second wafer is used as a counter electrode. In both designs, you actually have a titanium counter electrode, which is electrically isolated from the rest of the substrate, thanks to a titanium dioxide ring. And titanium dioxide acts as an electrical isolant. Let's now have a look on the equation governing the behavior of the sensor for small deflections. And the sensor sensibility, given in uh, femtofarad per pascal, uh, you have both the contribution of the electrical sensibility in femtofarad per micron and the mechanical sensibility in micron per pascal. And so in the electrical sensibility, you have uh, the contribution of the gap and the initial capacitance to the global sensibility. And in the mechanical sensibility, you have the information of how much the pillar or membrane will deflect. And so what we want is to have a sensor sensibility higher than 1 femtofarad per millimeter of mercury. A little reminder here, 1 millimeter of mercury equals around 133 pascal. And uh, 1 femtofarad is actually the minimal resolution we can measure thanks to a designed uh, low consumption acquisition system. To get the analytical equation of the sensor sensibility, one needs first to resolve the following equations. These are coming from the fundamental equation of capacitance. And after a resolution, we can get the following capacitances for post-design. From these equations, we can extract the electrical and mechanical sensibilities using identification with the first equation. Electrical sensibilities are given here. A multiplying, multiplying factor of four thirds can be found when dividing the electrical sensibility for a flat membrane with an inverse one. Why is this factor four? It comes from the fact that the surface of the electrodes are not exactly the same for both designs. The one for flat membranes is actually larger by a factor of two than for an embossed membrane. And as it is squared, you obtain uh, it is squared. Um, to get uh, something equivalent to a surface, uh, that's why you, you obtain your factor four. Mechanical sensibility for small deflections regime is given by the variation of the maximal deflection over the pressure. Okay, you can obtain the following equation for the mechanical sensibilities, where D is actually the fle flexural rigidity of the membrane, and in the case of in the case of pillars, uh, K, Y are constants. Uh, two effects as act as uh, contributors. You have the effect of pressure on the pillar and the effect of pressure on the membrane. That's why you have actually two terms um, for uh, the equation of the pillar. And when we compute the multiplying, multiplying sorry, factor between mechanical sensibility, uh, Okay, considering that the pillar is about one half of the membrane, we obtain a multiplying factor of four. As a conclusion, on a theoretical level, the sensor sensibility is about 16 out of third in favor uh, for the flat membranes. And actually, the main contributor is due to the mechanical sensibility. And that's why we are actually comparing the both designs uh, on a mechanical level. So here is an example of the fabricating membranes. And this is how we perform to fabricate them. First, we start with a titanium wafer on which we deposit a thin adhesion layer of chromium and copper. Then we pattern some photoresists. It will help defining an electrolytical nickel growth. After that, we strip the resist and perform some deep reactive ion etching technique. And after this step, we need to remove the nickel hard mask by performing a cranium etching mask. So um, back on the left, you have some cross-section views after this last step. We can see that the side walls are vertical and that the bottom edge uh, profile is a rather elliptic. Um, thicknesses 
were as thin as 12 microns for the flat membranes and 8 microns for the embossed structures. As mentioned earlier, we want to evaluate the mechanical sensibility to see if it's corresponding to our needs uh, for our pressure sensor. And so that's why we used a setup called the Bosch test. So on the left, you have a picture of the setup we used for pillar membranes. And on the right, you have the explanation. First, you need to glue your membrane, uh, your chips on the substrate. After that, you will apply a hydraulic pressure on the membrane through a, a small 3D net. The membrane will deflect and this deflection will be monitored by a laser-based displacement sensor. And here is a typical curve uh, obtained thanks to the setup. You have the deflection of the y-x over the pressure on the x-ax. The mechanical sensibility is given by the slope of the curve. By the way, we succeeded in applying another pressure of 17 bar uh, without breaking a 15 micron thick membrane, as I mentioned in another paper, uh, even uh, here. So this illustrates how interesting a titanium membrane can be for medical devices. However, we observed that the mechanical sensibility was about one order of magnitude that lower than um, expected. So how comes? And uh, as mentioned in the previous paper, we assume it was due to uh, actually the, the bottom edge profiles. So here we are going to actually uh, explain further what we did for the flat membranes. So the setup is slightly different. Uh, instead of the laser head, we have an interferometric based system. Uh, which is actually working as a Michelson Michael, interferometer. So you have a red beam, which is actually sent uh, to a beam splitter uh, called the PS2. And uh, half of the beam is then sent to Myro M2, which can, move, uh, which can be moved very precisely thanks to a piezoelectric ceramic. And the other half uh, is reflected on the sample S. Actually, both reflective beams are recombined on BS2 and create an interferogram. And this interferogram is then monitored by a CCD camera. And small phase shifts are generated thanks to the small displacement created on M2. The two interferograms are depicted for uh, two different pressures. We have uh, ops. Uh, 100, uh, sorry, uh, 380 uh, Pascal on the left and uh, 40,700 Pascal on the right. And uh, performing unwrapping, uh, unwrapping demodulation techniques becomes then possible to obtain the variation of height for uh, both uh, samples. So, uh, respectively, the 1 becomes the 3 and the 2 becomes the 4, so which is kind of hidden here. And uh, yes, the variation of height is depicted here with a grayscale. And it then becomes possible to subtract one image to another to get the 2D deflection profile. Yeah. And here's the same information but plotted as a 3D plot. You can see that there is a maximal deflection of uh, 4.47 sorry microns, which can be found. You can also see small uh, unwarping artifacts, uh, which can be seen locally. In total, three chips with flat membranes were tested with this uh, setup, and uh, they had uh, different di diameters. Uh, so the, we can see that the response is linear for the three curves, and mechanical sensibilities uh, are given in micron per pascal can be found by taking again the slope of the curves. So in this table, we report the results. Uh, so you have the different diameters which were tested, and uh, yes, so you have the, the result we obtained for interferometric measurements. 
compared with actually uh, analytical theory. And uh, there is actually a factor four, uh, factor eight, uh, between analy analytical theory and what we obtain for our membranes. So we suppose, as for the, the embossed membranes, we could explain the difference by the bottom edge profile. Actually, when looking closely, closer, we noticed that we could model the membrane thickness profile by an elliptic shape. And so we implemented it. As, um, we implemented uh, infinite element modeling analysis considering this new shape as depicted here. We actually performed the same kind of model for the embossed membrane, and we actually obtained good results. And now, if we compare the results with the same uh, results, uh, we have here the interference measurements. And here actually is the uh, same results. And we can see that we, are, we obtain results which are actually more consistent with uh, the experimental results. And you have a relative uh, absolute error of uh, 20%. Finally, we compared that we uh, we compared what we obtained for embossed structures with flat membranes with actually uh, what we had for uh, embossed membranes. We found out that actually the mechanical sensibility we obtained experimentally is roughly the same. But it can be explained by the fact that the thicknesses are also different. So, okay. so actually, we can compensate uh, the theoretical advantages of flat membranes uh, which were depicted uh, before by the theory. And finally, uh, what we also get from the, the, the same analysis is that uh, the stress in the flat membrane seems to be lower than for embossed structures. Uh, this simulation uh, results on uh, equivalent stress still have to be compared with uh, experimental reli reliability tests. And what's actually interesting, what's even more important, is that on a mechanical level, if you succeed to have a control gap of 10 micron, we can estimate the sensor sensibility. And for all these ships, we can obtain a sensibility of at least one femtofarad per millimeter of mercury, which is actually what we want to reach. So yeah, so this is pretty nice actually. Uh, here's a quick review of what have been said. Uh, we propose two designs for in vivo pressure monitoring. Um, therefore, titanium membranes where micro machine are out of uh, bulk titanium and membranes as thin as uh, 7.5 were uh, actually realized for embossed membranes, and as thin as uh, 12 micron for flat membranes. Uh, one of our embossed membrane handled a pressure of 17 bars without breaking, which is actually uh, really, really high. And uh, we succeeded in uh, using a finite element model uh, to estimate actually our mechanical sensibility. And uh, both membrane designs seem really promising to create our implantable pressure sensor. Uh, finally, uh, future and ongoing works uh, include actually the final MEMS assembly and uh, some real, real, uh, sorry, reliability tests uh, to compare even further these two designs. Uh, so as the sensor is actually meant for long-term uh, pressure monitoring. So I'd like to thank you uh, for your attention and if you have any question, I'd be glad to answer. Thank you.